Howdy! I'm back with this uh, Wes, a uh, Nintendo emulator tool. What I'm looking at today is actually adding more of a debugger style user interface to both manipulate the system, being the NES state, as well as um, execute traces step uh, disassembly, let's say, standard debugger type of stuff. I really want to have a system where I can uh, issue commands and queries to the emulator system and get back some type of information about the state of the system in case of a query or have the system proceed either normally or with some change that I've requested. Don't want too much with this console I.O. I really just want to be able to print a line. And again, for uh, the type of output string is str. That's from uh, Lee Howey's fancy library, which as we talked about previously, I have a, a pretty printer for structures using that library. So we're going to use that for uh, what needs to be sent to the console for output. And of course, I'm going to do an unlined one. Of course, we want input. And really, I'm only going to do line-based input. So we're going to do read line. So that's it for the interface. We're not using a uh, functor type in this yet uh, for multiple reasons. And that's what I mean by a functor type for multiple reasons. One being that Scala of Native doesn't have uh, ZIO support yet. And that's really the um, result functor I would want to use for this. The other reason is to just start out without introducing that concept. The implementations I want are one representation that's the deferred representation, and that's going to be something like this. We're going to have some deferred representation of these operations. Uh, this is sealed because we know what every single one is going to be for this deferred representation. And one of them is going to be print line, print line, and that's going to be an ops. And the other is going to be just print. Uh, and this, again, is going to get kind of weird when we get to read line, but we're actually just going to stop for read line. There's not going to be a operation representation for read line. I know that for the deferred representation, that I will be feeding that data from an input buffer. And we'll just say this is a and actually I would really prefer this to be uh, just the initial input instead of the entire input buffer. And for that, it really just has to be any traversable collection of strings. Ooh. Which is getting rather long, so we'll break this line up. And this is going to be a console IO implementation. And our uh, deferred console, and you can see it doesn't compile right now, but it has three unimplemented members. And of course, we haven't implemented any of them. So and for a deferred representation, we really wanted to build this ops structure whenever this is invoked and not actually do anything else. But these take, sorry, these uh, are in a pure context. So we need to break that by adding some mutable variables. And that's okay. Again, this is largely for just um, testing, so I'm not too worried. It will remove those mutable variables or mutable values, I should say, at uh, some other time for the others. And that's just going to add a bit of complexity there. But for this, we don't really care. But we can take that initial input and map it to a buffer fairly easily. So now we have two mutable buffers, one of operations, one of strings, and we have three 
Let's uh, quiet the type checker. There we go. We have three operations that need to be implemented. And we can examine the type of those. And you can already see uh, one disadvantage of not using that functor type here is that the inferred type is found whole with type unit, which doesn't really tell us anything. If we had a context here, we'd at least know we're expected to have a value of something in that context. So what we're going to do, though, is out buffer. Again, we're just going to add uh, an operation to our output buffer of operations. Very unexciting and very similar to this one. Again, fairly easy. We're just adding to our deferred operations being accumulated in this output buffer. And for read line, this is only slightly different in that we are removing an element from our mutable buffer and returning that. And um, I always get lost here because in Scala, buffers do not have a pop. No, which is unfortunate, but they do have a remove. Oops. We're going to remove the zeroth element. So now there is a representation of console IO that defers the actual output and reads the input from a buffer. Uh, this as it is, we don't have any way to examine out buffer or in buffer. So we're going to add two operations. One is that the output buffer, we want the operations thus buffered, thus we're kind of flushing it. So I'll add a flush. And uh, something similar to flush is adding a line of input. There is a problem here uh, right off the bat. You might see that uh, what happens if the input buffer is empty? Well, this is going to fail. And uh, there's no representation for blocking or uh, stating this read line is going to block or there is no available input. That's fine for this case because we're, this is mostly for testing and to demonstrate this pattern for future bits of this emulator system. So we'll just start with that.